So in this section, I want to go through and show you how to make it two up your imposition you already created. So we need to go in and modify it. I went through and finished all the imposition, laying the pages out according to that template and dummy that I showed you. Uh, but now we're going to finish it off. So what we need to do here is change your document setup. Um, and we're going to double that size. So right there it needs to be 10 and a half. But we also have to account for a gutter in between there. So we're actually going to make this 10.75. Okay. And that's through the document setup once again. And now that you have that, you've got you've got to go through and straighten out your pages. But basically, you just have to move them side to side. And you can hold the shift key to move it over. Um, I like to go through and move all of them, holding the shift key. Make sure you get it right and line it up. Makes it a little bit easier to move all of them over. And then come back and oh, messed up there. One of these didn't quite get to the right line. It's going too fast. So we'll make those, move them over. Get all of them slid, slid over to that side. Bear with me just as I pull this through. And that should be all of them. So once you move them all over to the side, then you can copy these over. Now I like to use the shift and the option command. It holds it straight and it copies it. You see two arrows there. As soon as you hold the option key, it doubles up, indicating that it's going to copy it. If you do it in that fashion, then you can come down and use the shortcut, which is edit. Where is it? Don't see the shortcut. There's a transform again option, and I only probably gonna oh here it is transform transform again, and you notice that it's option command three. That's the shortcut that I use. Okay. So if you do that, you can select those two boxes with the marquee selection. Make sure you get the black arrow. Option command three will duplicate that over. Make sure you use the right selection tool. If you use the right wrong selection tool, it'll move just the picture and not the box itself. So want to make sure that you're using the correct one. That should make it really easy if you've done that. So I'll spare you the trouble of watching me finish all of these. Uh, and we'll go finish this off. We'll assume that it's all, well, pretty close here. Finish them all off. It'll make it easier when I go through and add the trim marks. So I've got them all done. Now that I've got them all set up, I do want to indicate that gutter. So I can go through File, Document Setup, More Options, and add a slug in there. We'll add the slug at 0.25 at a quarter inch, make it span on all four sides. We really only need it on the top and bottom, but we'll put all four sides. And basically, we're going to put a mark, and we can actually use page one. We can actually use this indicator. It doesn't span all the way out. But we could drag a guide in here and put it right on that mark. With that guide, then we can now draw a trim mark. And I can zoom up in that. And we'd want it to be straight up and down. So I'll try that again. And there's your trim mark. Typically those are a quarter point stroke typically black. So now we have it there, but we need that trim mark to be five and a quarter to come over here to indicate where these trims are. So in order to do that, we can just double click this black arrow tool, get the move options. Um, the distance will do 5.25 and to move it to the angle to the right, we want it to be zero. So we'll leave it at zero. We can hit preview just to see that and click OK. Um, and that moved it from here to where we need it, the trim mark, so that'll trim off. On the edges, we'll just use the default program's trim marks. We'll let InDesign handle that, but we do need them for the center. So now that we have that one, we need to move it one more time. This time, we only need to move it a quarter inch. Oops, 
about 25 inches, 0.25. And you, with that preview, you can see it. And we also want to check the copy option. So that copies it. Okay. Now at that point, you can use a marquee tool. Okay. You can copy them or use that shift and option command, which I like to do. The shift will bring it straight down. And then the option command will copy it. And I'm using the bar to slide it down just so I can see where I'm working. So I'll use the shift and the option, which will copy it in that place. Okay. Now we have them at the top and the bottom. So I'll have those selected. I'm going to go ahead and hit hold the shift key down and select these two. And at this point, we can go to object and group them. Makes it kind of nice. Then you can copy that. Go down to the next page, make sure the next page is selected, and you can right click and paste in place, or go up to edit and paste in place, and that's shift, let's see, option, shift, command, and V is the shortcut. So we can click on each one, shift, option, command, V, paste it in place on each one of those. So you'd want to go through and paste that on every page, and then you'll have your trim marks that you need for the gutter. And once again, we'll put the trim marks. I'll show you how to do that right now. If you go to File and Export, remember that Export's the only way we can get PDFs in InDesign. Uh, there's no in PDF options under the Save menu. So make sure you go to File and Export. Select PDF, give it a name, uh, choose your location, hit Save. Then it's going to give you your options. I always start with the high quality print. Uh, then we come down to Marks and Bleeds typically want to add all. You don't really need the bleed marks, so we'll uncheck those. So for this particular layout, I would do all of these options. Include the document bleed setting. That's critical, otherwise it won't add the bleed. And then we also need to include the slug area or we won't get our marks. At that point, you can hit export and it will save it right to the desktop. Hopefully not to take too long and we can take a look at those marks. Um, all those marks should show up when you export your PDF correctly, then you should be good to go. Take that into your copy center or wherever and you can print that. Have your calendar all in position, ready to print. So give it a minute and we'll check this PDF out. And there it is. All your trim marks, all your marks show up, your color bars, it's two up, in position file. Made a new PDF, should be good to go.